this, this far-right, basically, leaning government is becoming so authoritarian and anti-democratic that if it passes this law, it can use it as a template against the climate justice movement, the racial justice movement, against trade unions. With, uh, with the cost of living crisis in the UK, with increasing social uh, mobility against injustices, this government wants to shut down basically all this uh, uh, protest. And the best way, the easiest way to do it, start with the Palestinians, start with BDS. They see us as the weakest link. Instead of condemning what is happening in Tel Aviv, condemning this right-wing government, they seem to be opening their doors and rolling out the red carpet for them. So by trying to silence voices advocating Palestinian rights, this government is using us as guinea pigs, as a test lab, to pass repression against every progressive movement, especially trade unions. And I think most people realize that, and that's why opposition to it is massive in the, in the, in the UK. It might affect procurement and investment, divestment by public bodies, universities, city councils, which is extremely dangerous, yes, but it won't stop every other aspect of, of BDS uh, uh, in the British uh, public. One who absolutely voted against this wretched bill on Monday night, not just because of its singling out of the Palestinian people for special mention within the bill, but because of the very dangerous effects it will have on our free speech. It's intended to have a chilling effect, to make people say, you know, I'm, I don't want to engage in this BDS campaign because isn't that illegal? People might misunderstand this law as if banning BDS. It doesn't ban BDS. It doesn't make BDS illegal. It makes some aspects of BDS illegal uh, related to public bodies. Now, countering the chilling effect is extremely important. And our partners in the UK, Palestine Solidarity Campaign and many other partners, trade unions that have adopted BDS, representing millions of workers in the UK, almost all major trade unions in the UK adopt BDS. Um, they're saying to their uh, 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 grassroots, to their membership, it should not stop you from continuing to do BDS campaigns. It will happen. There will be people as I speak saying that this is an anti-Semitic gathering and it will be trying to condemn us for having the temerity to oppose what the Israeli government is doing. We do not attack or condemn these Israeli soldiers because they are Jewish. We do not condemn or attack people because of what they believe or what faith they have. We condemn them because of what they do. As many British and international lawyers have said, and international law experts, this bill violates British obligations before international law, before the European uh, uh, Convention of Human Rights, and before even British law. Uh, by failing to recognize the occupied territories as illegal and that companies doing business in those territories, whether the West Bank, including East Jerusalem, Gaza, or, or the Golan Heights, the Syrian Golan Heights, any company helping Israeli projects in those occupied territories is violating international law. By failing to uh, uphold this basic uh, tenet of international law, the British government is actually calling for violating international law and its own obligations uh, to international law. More importantly, politically speaking, morally speaking, as Archbishop Desmond Tutu of South Africa, who was one of the leaders of the anti-apartheid movement, said uh, in the West, the UK included, Israel is put on a pedestal above everyone else, above international law. This bill does exactly that. It puts Israel and Israel alone on a pedestal. No other state in the bill has this privilege of being above the law above accountability. Now when Russia illegally occupies Ukraine when it sends down bombs on Kyiv, our government rallies to the aid of Ukrainians, imposes sanctions and calls on our public bodies to impose their own boycotts and supplies Ukraine with military hardware. The colonial hypocrisy is unbelievable. The same British government that imposed sanctions, extremely far-reaching sanctions on Russia days after the invasion of Ukraine, refuses, after seven decades and more 
of Israeli settler colonialism and apartheid to even consider ending its complicity, let alone imposing sanctions, ending its complicity in this system. I mean, the British government is a partner in Israel's crimes. The anti-boycott bill is just a further continuance of the British government's support of this injustice. The government is seeking to silence our voices of protest, to stifle our solidarity, and to quell our movements for justice. BDS is an anti-racist movement that opposes all forms of racism, including not just Islamophobia and so on, anti-Semitism. BDS has always rejected discrimination and racism against any group of people. So that's, that's uh, number one. Uh, There's so many Jewish supporters uh, in the BDS movement, especially in North America, but increasingly in the UK and Europe as well, that play a very important role in our struggle for freedom, justice, and uh, equality. No country on earth claims a right to exist in a specific political form, except Israel. Exist as what? As a settler colony? As an apartheid state? No regime has a right to exist as a settler colony and as an apartheid regime. The South African regime had no right to exist as an apartheid state. Neither does the Israeli regime have a right to exist as an apartheid state. Oh,